How does a decentralized social media protocol reach a billion users? Well, you need a blockchain that is secure, extremely scalable, and decentralized to its core. And there is one blockchain in Web3 that offers exactly that. And in this video, we're gonna talk about which blockchain that is, I'm sure you can take a guess. How it's possible thanks to Hypersync and why all of this is so important for the future of decentralized social media and Web3 as a whole. And if you watch until the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of what makes Deso so unique and why it will be the winner in the decentralized social media space. I promise you do not wanna miss that. So we need to start with why traditional blockchains are not designed for decentralized social media. These legacy blockchains are great for trustless data synchronization. This simply refers to the ability to download all financial transactions and user balances happening on a specific network. And this synchronization has to be as efficient as possible so that blockchain data can be shared quickly across the network. Because we all know Web3 users are incredibly impatient and want to use a network that has the fastest transaction speeds. I know personally I am guilty of that. The existing state-of-the-art approach to blockchain synchronization have worked well for finite state blockchains that only need to store up to say 100 gigabytes of data on chain. Other layer one blockchains are only designed to scale storage light or finite state applications such as decentralized financial protocols, where only a few bytes of storage are needed per account. However, social applications are storage heavy and require an infinite state, generating data on every post, follow, like, and more that needs to be stored forever. Infinite state applications are needed for social media because storage must grow as more users join the network and create content. As we covered in more detail in this video right here, DSO was designed to handle infinite state applications, meaning it's able to store tens or even hundreds of terabytes worth of data. And the reality is existing blockchain synchronization approaches are not able to scale to this level. Storing just a 200 character tweet on Ethereum cost $80 and from 25 cents to $1 on Solana, Avalanche, and Polygon. In contrast, storing this on DSO's blockchain costs a thousandth of a penny thanks to DSO's scaling advantages. And when we compare the cost of storing one gigabyte of on-chain state on other blockchains compared to DSO, we see just how absurd the cost is on these other layer one networks. You see, most blockchains face a sort of trilemma, which was cleverly named the blockchain trilemma. A traditional blockchain has to choose between two of three options. It can be either decentralized and scalable, secure and scalable, or secure and decentralized, but not all three. DSO was in the same boat, being both secure and decentralized. But in order for DSO to reach its full potential and offer an infrastructure to support billions of social media users, the synchronization process needed drastic improvements. As a solution to these pressing speed and scalability issues, Hypersync was born. Traditionally, blockchains are synced by downloading blocks. The node will download all blocks starting from the genesis or first block up to the tip or latest block, along with all the transactions contained in these blocks. Next, the node will reprocess all of these transactions, which means processing every single transaction that has happened in the blockchain's history. Finally, after hours and hours of transaction processing, the node will arrive at the latest blockchain state. As you can probably already tell, this process is incredibly inefficient. For example, if you send a friend $100 and they send that $100 back to you, these two transactions don't change how much money either you or your friend have. Yet these are two separate transactions that would have to be processed when we are syncing blocks. Now imagine instead of downloading and reprocessing every transaction, you just download the result of these transactions. That is, imagine if you just download the resulting balance sheet, also referred to as the snapshot of how much money each user has. In this approach, it doesn't matter how many transactions the user has made, be it 100, 100,000, or even 100 million. What matters is who? and how much money they have at the end. Downloading the snapshot is in turn way more efficient than downloading all of the blocks. And with the introduction of ancestral records, these snapshots are trimmed down to remove unnecessary data, making the overall download size even smaller. This is how Hypersync works. So I know this has been a ton of technical jargon, but you need to understand this. Hypersync makes it faster to sync a node, which makes it easier to run one, which increases decentralization and innovation. It also helps with speed and scalability, as well as building applications on the decentralized social blockchain. Thanks to Hypersync, DSO will become the go-to blockchain for decentralized social media. I suggest you head over to DSO.org and take a look at the hundreds of applications within the DSO ecosystem and see for yourself just how groundbreaking all of this is. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, you need to check out this video right here where I talk about how DSO is empowering its users to take back control of their social graph thanks to the power of decentralization.